EFL TV, proudly brought to you by Ferntree Gully Motor Group. Good afternoon and welcome to the EFL Agenda for another week. I'm Braden Ingram and uh, back again this week. Ray Bear, good afternoon, mate. Good afternoon, Braden. We uh, we had a really interesting week again in the uh, in the EFL. Four weeks of football so far, and we've got to start with Division One, don't we? Ball and uh, going down to East Ringwood is a cracking game and, and a great first win for East Ringwood. Yeah, look, it was a great effort by East Ringwood, and and now they are the holders of the Davon Park and uh, Community Cup that these two team plays for. So uh, well done to East Ringwood. And over the last couple of weeks, we've probably been a bit critical of them, haven't we? Uh, Ray and this week that they found a found a way back over, over the best team in the in the competition. Well, to me they've been a sleeping giant because I picked them to play finals and for the first three weeks they they were they were they were sleeping. But now look, they've come out and they they they've defeated the team that most people would think uh, would go through the season undefeated and uh, look that they could uh, kickstart this season now. East Ringwood. Bourne had their opportunities two thirteen to half time and ended up with five eighteen forty eight to uh, to East Ringwood's eight eight fifty six. Uh, I'd probably say Dan Danone would have had some words to them after the game, right? Oh, no doubt about that. But the, the thing is that I just question that coming off such an easy win the week before against uh, Scoresby, yep. you know, whether or not that has damaged their, their, uh, their, their style and, and their commitment. Why do you think that is? Is it just you, you roll through that week and then you expect the same thing again the following week? Well, I think yeah, it's a mental issue. I, I believe you know. I'd like to see that the history on teams that have uh, that have really won well over year, over the years and see how they have gone in in the, the next week. But uh, no, I, I, it's a mental thing. I do think maybe they came out and thought that it was all going to happen again. You're dead right there. We've got to focus on the winning side though, East Ringwood, and you look at the players in their best. I mean, a number of them old, experienced heads and players that have come from other clubs, particularly Scoresby. I mean, Van Ruyen, Brenton Leg, Andrew Retton, David Marcius, Cam Purdy, who kicked three goals, was crucial in the win, and Owen Chadwick as well. Three of those players from Scoresby, they're the ones that we've been saying need to stand up, and they did. Well, they've certainly got their money's worth out of that game from the, the players that they have picked up from Scoresby. And, of course, uh, we've got to add to that uh, Jaden Badaline, who came in and kicked two goals for East. He, he's been a very good player for them as well. East Ring with Blackburn next week. That's another big challenge for them. And uh, if they're going to get their season again rolling, I mean, one win's good good, but they've got to back it up. Well, they've, they've certainly got to back it up, and that's going to be a ripper of a game, and, and it's back at East Ringwood too, so that's a, that's a big advantage. Speaking of ripping games, Ray, i uh, tell you what, uh, Knox, Noble Park, we saw a sensational game. Uh, we're actually going to throw you into it now. 20, uh, 25 seconds left in the final term. Noble Park are trailing by one, and they're heading down the wing. <laughs> was a sensational finish to that one. Uh, Noble just getting the behind. It was uh, on the wing there. Nick Frost got a great tap on there to Trent Cody, who goes in, kicks a kicks a tough behind in in the pocket. And uh, well, Noble they needed they probably needed the win, but the draw really salvaged something in the end. Uh, Ray. Yeah, look, they, both sides, I suppose. You know, a draw is a draw. You get two points are better than no points, so they they, they walk away with two points each. But uh, where that where are both of these sides at? I look at it that. Uh, Knox uh, have got it a bit harder, I think, because they come up against Norwood next week. That's going to be a huge touch for them. Whereas Noble Park, they they back at the bull ring and they've got Scoresby, so they could they can get back on the winning list. Noble Park and uh, and let's hope that they can kick start their season. I think for Noble, they're going to get a win this week against Scoresby. Well, you'd imagine so. Yeah, that's exactly. right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but you don't want that to paper over the cracks because there's clearly some issues there. Only the one win, they've got the draw and and a draw against Knox and and not taking away anything away from Knox, but the, the younger side, they've struggled to start the season. And coming off uh, you know, a uh, grand final last year, Noble haven't impressed too much. No, well, look, they're not, they're not the powerhouse side that they used to be. They're, they're, no one's going to disagree with that. Yep. But, uh, look, they've got time, though, to resurrect their season. And, uh, look, they might well slip into fifth spot and play final. Who knows? You know, They've got the chance this week to turn their season around. And then after that, they've got Vermont. So that's going to be a really interesting game to see how they go yep. there. Uh, and uh, to wrap up Division 1, 
Ray, another intriguing week in Division 2. And going to start with Croydon. They're the only undefeated team. And they put away uh, last year's grand finalist, Murabaki, in a pretty comfortable fashion, I thought. Yeah, look, they're playing some very good football, Croydon. And, uh, look, uh, a game that uh, most people would have thought that Croydon would have got over the line. But, yeah, they did it quite well, really. Is Moorabark's issue still up forward and, and, ha- and being able to kick those goals? I think it is, Brad. And look, they're not kicking huge scores. And uh, look, they've, they've got to turn that. Look, they, they expect their midfield to kick goals every yeah. week. And it's not going to happen every week. Uh, they've got the bye next week. So a bit of a week off to recover. Croydon have got, uh, just having a look here, they've got Doncaster East. So an interesting game. Ray, that rolls uh, very nicely into last week's game, Doncaster East and Mulgrave, and a really tight one, uh, just getting over the line, Mulgrave, Mulgrave by one point at Zerbys Reserve, uh, intriguing game. Oh, it must have been an exciting finish out there at uh, Zerbys, that's for sure. Indeed it was, Ray, and here's the closing minutes of that intriguing game. It was certainly a great finish to that game and a game that remained tight, not really a big margin at either breaks, but Chris Doyle's three goals for Doncaster East, they ended up proving crucial. Yeah, no, that, that's for sure. And, and while we're talking about Doncaster East, I was looking at the draw and look, to me they got the, the raw end of the pineapple, Doncaster East, on the draw this year. Look, over the Easter they had the Easter break, then they had a bye, and so they had three weeks between their games and then not only that, but they copied again with the bye yeah. later in the year with a, and, and uh, the, uh, the split round as well. So look, uh, Doncaster East, they're not too happy about the, uh, the, uh, the fixture at the Division 3 time now, and uh, we've been getting up and about about Whitehorse, and although they didn't get over the line, the eight-point loss to Baronia gets our, uh, our hearts up and about again, Ray, because they've been going quite nicely. Yeah, well, that, that shows that they can be competitive with the top sides in Division 3. There's no doubt about that. And the start to the season, everybody would be absolutely thrilled down there at the, at the Pioneers. Down by 36 points at half time In the past, that probably would have gone on to be a 10-goal uh, beating. Instead, they've come back and really been competitive. Yeah, look, they've been competitive in all their games as we said you know tremendous start to the season and uh, it, it's a team that uh, have just avoided relegation as we know in the last three seasons so it's great to see them up there matching it with the top boys. And Baronia not always um, absolutely putting sides to the sword but they're getting the wins and they remain undefeated so they're just moving along nicely. That comes about as I've said many a time Mark Hardy's style of, of play shutting the opposition down that that's why and they will always have tight wins but uh, they don't kick huge huge scores Baronia but they, they win games. Braden. Yeah, as long as he gets the wins, I don't think Mark that's really all. cares, does he? No, that's right. You're uh, right. Now moving on to the undefeated, other undefeated side, Ray and Mitchum. You saw them against Templestowe. How did you see that game on the weekend? Well, it was a game that Tempe had their chances. They had all the play in the first quarter, but just didn't convert. When and uh, look, the game was really won in 15 minutes in the second quarter. That Mitchum just came out, got the ball out the centre, kicked it long, and kicked I think six goals to nil for that second quarter. And then the rain and the weather came, and and the, and the game closed down. And uh, it was a great win by Mitchum. So is it hard to actually take anything out of that game considering Templestowe only kicked the three goals? Look, I, what I took out of that game is that uh, Mitchum are a much quicker, bigger body and they play a greater style of football than what Templestowe do. And of course Division 4, Ray, and we've got to start off Warrandyte winning over Nunawari they've finally got a bit of access to their rooms and they celebrated it with a big win. Yeah, it was a huge win for by Warrandyte. Most people would have expected them to win, but it was a, a huge margin, but uh, in Division 4 all the five home sides who were the top five sides in the in the, in the division uh, got comfortable wins. Yeah, well I mean when you say comfortable, I mean all team, all games except for the Sylvan Eastern Lions were over 10 goals, so I mean that just probably shows the little bit of uh, gap between in class between you've got your your one and five teams and your six to ten. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be hard for any. Well, the thing, the thing, it's going to be is that there's only going to be four play finals, and there's five teams fighting it out. So we're going to have a very interesting lead up to the finals in Division Four. Yeah, we got it! 